Blog Talk Radio. Franchise interviews from Eastern Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia. You're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews. Welcome to Franchise Interviews, an up-close, behind-the-scenes look at franchising and entrepreneurship. Listen to interviews with franchisers, franchisees, franchise authors, franchise experts, and attorneys. And now, welcome your host, Marty McDermott, and Franchise Interviews. Hi, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of Franchise Interviews, where for over 15 years now, we've been asking the French entrepreneurs one more. I'm your host, Marty McDermott. I'm the president of Franchise Interviews, and we have a great show today. Well, we're meeting with Peter Stern, Managing Director USA of Mr. Jeff, a laundry service-infused, cutting-edge AI technology that has globally modernized the tedious task of laundry in more than 30 countries and is proud to announce its contribution to the conservation of water and energy through its use of laundry services. I'm going to talk to Peter about that in just a moment on Franchise Interviews. So stick around because we have a great show. Franchise Teacher. Would you like to know how to franchise your concept? or grow your franchise business. Meet the experts at Franchise Teacher. The goal of Franchise Teacher is to teach, coach, consult, and advise. The team of experts at Franchise Teacher will evaluate your business model and present you with a winning business strategy. Franchise Teacher will help you decide whether or not your concept works and if it's franchisable. Franchise Teacher is proud to have over 30 years of experience in franchising as both franchisees and franchisors. Franchise Teacher are developers of over a dozen franchise systems which include brick and mortar as well as home-based concepts of nearly 3,000 combined franchise locations. Whether you need to add more units or get more customers, Franchise Teacher can help. We will teach. Franchise Teacher will help you learn our proven system. Coach. Franchise Teacher will help you provide a game plan to succeed. Consult. Franchise Teacher will make sure you stay on track. And advise. Franchise Teacher will help you learn from our over 30 years of experience in franchising as both franchisees and franchisors. Take advantage of our free, no obligation phone consultation. Simply go to FranchiseTeacher.com or call us at 561-385-3032. That's FranchiseTeacher.com or call us at 561-385-3032. Hi, this is Connie McDermott, Administrative Assistant for Franchise Interviews, LLC, and you're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews, from Eastern Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia, you're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to a very special edition of Franchise Interviews, where for over 15 years now, we've been asking the French entrepreneurs of one one. I'm your host, Marty McDermott. I'm the president of Franchise Interviews, and as we were saying earlier, we have a great show today. We're meeting with Peter Stern, the Managing Director USA of Mr. Jeff, a laundry service-infused, cutting-edge technology that has globalized, modernized, and the tedious task of laundry in more than 30 countries. Hi, Peter. How are you? Welcome to the show. Hi, Marty. How are you? Uh, Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Oh, thank you. I'm excited as well, Peter. It's great to have you on the show. We always like to ask our guests, where are you calling from today, Peter? I'm calling from uh, New York, New York, Manhattan. Oh, good. Uh, Fantastic. Little city in the north. I have heard of it. Very I'm very familiar with it. Yeah, I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, and my family is, is still there. So I'm very familiar with, with, with Manhattan. So that's fantastic. Uh, you know, this, this is a great story, Peter. I, you know, I thought that, you know, maybe we can go back to, to, to the beginning because this is, you know, a different type of franchise concept. You know, we've been doing this show 15 years now. And, of course, you know, we've had a lot of, you know, sub-franchises and pizza franchises, but, but really not business. So and maybe, you know, you could describe the history of Mr. Jeff and how the whole thing came about. Sure. Uh, so Mr. Jeff was founded in 2016 in Valencia, mm-hmm. Spain. Uh, Aloy Gomez founder, he founded with two uh, 
colleagues from university. They had a, a couple prior startups and exits, mm-hmm. and uh, they, uh, along with a lot of other people in the world, especially younger people, found uh, there was a real challenge and a real void in mm-hmm. the laundry space. They, they found it as tough. Um, right. They were very, uh, very busy, young, working entrepreneurs that, right. that, you know, wanted to focus on growing their company and not doing their laundry. So they wanted a seamless, frictionless way to do laundry and just get that chore right. done and uh, didn't, couldn't find it uh, in an adequate way. So they said, wow, mm-hmm. uh, let's do this. Is there really nothing out there? And as they dug into it, they, were, uh, you know, they um, learned what I have, lived with for the past 20 years being in the, right. the laundry industry is right. that it really is an industry that um, is devoid of tech and innovation mm-hmm. and progress for many years uh, and right for, for this type of concept. So right. they were um, initially came at it from a heavy tech point of view, building, building uh, the app and the tech platform, but then uh, quickly realized that there were many needs beyond that to help support mm-hmm. entrepreneurs get into this business and thrive in the business. So right. uh, decided to go full throttle into the franchise system and uh, then quickly exploded around the world from there. So in 2,000 franchises across 30 countries. That's, it, it's an amazing story, Peter, and it's interesting because I heard of Mr. Jeff, I, I, it's probably, a, I guess, maybe about a year ago, you know, when I heard about the technology, I said, wow, it, I mean, it's it's really fascinating. What's interesting, you know, I, I think I mentioned it in the beginning of the show, in the introduction, is how you're able to save, what is it, I think it was like over 12 million gallons of water and 593.27 kilowatts of energy a year compared to doing laundry at home. I, I thought that was fascinating. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that because that's important to people today, isn't it? Yeah, and I think it's it's going to become ever more important. You can see, you know, what's going on um, mm-hmm. in the macro economy with uh, energy independence and, and right. uh, you know, uh, fossil fuels, but then mm-hmm. the, uh, what's been overlooked, um, and especially here in the U.S., when when you mm-hmm. go outside of the U.S., I think people are more cognizant of how scarce uh, clean water is. Um, right. But I, I, I that that's going to become you know uh, a more and more pressing issue uh, in in the years to come. And uh, like, listen, uh, like anything else. There, there have been huge advancements in technology, even in uh, washing machines, and mm-hmm. you could do more or less. But, right. Uh, it's not it, – uh, people don't have the infrastructure or the means to put this type of equipment in their right. homes. It's very right. expensive. Um, you need, you know, uh, industrial uh, plumbing lines, uh, different types of – electric connections and then uh you know we uh you, you buy machines that are commercial grade that you know can last for for 20 years it's a long term mm-hmm. investment whereas people in their in their houses are, aren't uh necessarily looking um that way or the return on that investment for you know one residential consumer that's just running their loads isn't going to be the same as somebody that's you know in like a Mr. Jeff operation where they're running right. uh, load after load after load of laundry at the same machine. That's great. So, so that's certainly a, a benefit, Peter. And I guess another benefit of, of the service, of course, is, is time, right? I mean, I think if I were to ask my wife, you know, what's the one thing she hates doing the most is 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 the laundry. You know, I mean, it's it's, it's time consuming. It's not very interesting. Um, so I, I, I suspect that that's another benefit to your, your service. And I'm thinking about, you know, who is or who are maybe if there is such a thing as like your typical customers to Mr. Jess. Yeah, that, that, it's really interesting because you, you hit on a point that I uh, I often talk about when people mm-hmm. have, you know, because in, in any uh, business, especially uh, retail consumer business, people yeah. are always trying to know your customer and what's your target profile. Right. And traditionally, it's really honed in on demographics of uh, age, income levels, geography. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, for me... It, it's it's a little bit different. It does have some sweet spots in demographics, but really right. it's the person that 
values their time the most. Right. And I, I've, mm-hmm. I've, I've said many times yeah. that, like, the, the one thing that the younger generations have uh, taught me that mm-hmm. I think that, you know, they, they've gotten a lot of uh, flack for, but I think that um, we could all learn a little bit, is that sure, they I really agree. value their time differently. I, I think it yes. started with the millennial generation. Yeah. And right. listen, it, it's, it's, they, they value time with their friends, with yeah. their family, with their loved right. ones, um, right. pursuing a dream or, you know, right. or if they, they start the gig economy that way to, uh, you know, just isolate. They want to work when they want to work and they want to play mm-hmm. when they want to play. Right. And uh, along with that is many of them would rather uh, spend, you know, two, three hours doing something enjoyable rather than doing the chore of laundry. So, yeah. um, right. I think, and I think, you know, so easily it applies to the sweet spot in the, in the millennial and younger group. But, but also mm-hmm. you touched upon, you know, probably your wife. I, I know, you know, I have kids that are older now, I have twin boys that are mm-hmm. 15, but, um, mm-hmm. you know, so much of the past decade or longer uh, has been filled weekends with, you know, travel sports and, you know, right. one practice, game, mm-hmm. you know, after the other. And uh, if you're a dual income family, right. time to do laundry, just, you know, it, it's it's not there anymore. So right. I think you're right. really going to see that evolution of laundry become an outsourced chore uh, for right. everybody. Um, I know, agree. Similar to the way I grew up in the suburbs of New York, and I, mm-hmm. I use the analogy, but in, in the early 80s, it wasn't uncommon. Most people mowed their own lawn. They did their own right. landscape. That's right. Um, yeah. Now, Good analogy. Right, uh, yeah. You, you just don't see it. Um, right. And that, that's another aspect of, uh, you know, the evolution of valuing time differently. Yeah, and it, I, I guess that's probably the, the success, too, of why Mr. Jeff is, is now in 30 countries, which is, is, is a pretty impressive number, isn't it, Peter? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, re- it's, it's really impressive uh, hyper growth. Uh, when, um, when, I, when I came across and was doing the research on them, I was, I was just blown away. I mean, I, I've been in the laundromat industry for 20 years, and uh, I, I've, ne- I've never seen – We've, nobody's seen growth like this, so it was it was staggering. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. I so you were talking about you know growing up in New York, Peter. You know, as I was thinking of, of of the old days, you know, as I remember back in the seventies of you know when my mom would do the wash and she'd hang it on the on the on the line. You know, I don't know if you remember those days. You know, yeah, the clothes sure. were hanging outside, and you know, it's just. But it's interesting how things change over the course of time, and you compare it to, uh, you know, the, the landscaping industry. And right, it's true. You, you don't see anyone cutting their lawn anymore. You're right, and and this is this is going to be the the, the new uh, socio-cultural trend, I, I, I believe, in society. I, I don't know a lot about the industry. I, 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 I would it would be safe to say that, you know, um, this is a very big industry. I mean, are, are there numbers on the industry, Peter? It's got to be in the billions, I guess. It's, it's, it's hard to pin down because, as I mentioned before, there really is a lack of uh, technology, right. uh, which leads to uh, a lack of yeah. transparency of figures. Um, it's also right. an extremely fragmented industry. Yes, so, it is. Yeah. Right. You don't have huge change. You have mostly mom and pop uh, operators out there, um, right? And uh, they're not uh, very open with their numbers uh, for yeah. a variety of reasons. But it, I've heard different things. I, I, you know, I place the industry somewhere, you know, eight to ten billion. But yeah, there's 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 a lot of uh, a, a lot of forecasting right. um, and a lot of that. Specifically in the wash and fold sector, right. Um, so there's self-service laundry where you go to laundromat yeah. and you do your own laundry, and then there's wash and fold or full service, and uh, right. that growth has been exponential in in the last five years and is is uh, prone to uh, uh, accelerate further. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. And that's that's one of the things, you know, that has been a theme of our show too, Peter, is, is you know, we recommend to our listeners is, you know, this, to go towards those industries that are, are, are growing, you know, um, you know, and I, I think that's so important. How, how does the technology actually work, Peter? So, I mean, for our listeners, you know, maybe even for our older listeners, like, how does the technology work? So it sounds like it's an app or something like that, and it's, if you could describe that. Yeah, so you, we have a... Uh, 
customer facing uh, app, mobile app similar that you would see, you know, in all sorts of uh, delivery services, right. whether it be Grubhub or Instacart. Sure. Uh, yeah. So uh, a lot of time spent on that. And then there's uh, the logistics component. So all right. our franchises are equipped with the ability to execute uh, full service pickup and delivery and right. um, logistics and routing and, and, and all, all the things you need to execute that. And then there's a uh, business management suite um, for, mm-hmm. for the operator, which will, uh, is their portal uh, into everything they need to operate the, the business, um, you know, from the POS system to uh, marketing services. We have a chat yeah. bot that helps them do all their digital marketing and then wow. offline marketing. As, as well, um, and uh, a Jeff Academy, which will train the franchisee on all aspects mm-hmm. of business and, and, and laundry and laundry care um, and how to fold and uh, just tips on uh, business management practices, right. and training, uh, play, and, and all, all that sort of thing. So it's an entire robust tech platform uh, just designed to support uh franchisee with everything they need to, to run the business. And, you mm-hmm. know, the great part about it is it's uh, it's a living, breathing thing. So it's not like, right. you, it's not like right. you get annual and then right. it, it, it's already outdated by the time you start using it. And, and we have all these data points from all across the, the world that continue mm-hmm. to feed this data-rich environment that right. will, you know, help target the customer profiles, customer retention techniques, wow. and everything that works and everything that um, is working around the world, you benefit from as a franchisee, you get access to, you know, um, the uh, the richness of all that data to, to right. help uh, make decisions and run your business. Yeah, I think, I think that's so important. So what types of characteristics um – are, are important to you or, or do you look for um, in, in your prospective franchisees, Peter? I mean, when you're meeting with them, like what's most important to you to tell that they're going to be a good fit for Mr. Jeff? I think there's uh, a couple good principles that, mm-hmm. that I'm looking for. And, and mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it relates a lot to the, the hospitality sector business. Mm, like, right. Like, that makes sense. You know, one is being a good manager and team builder mm-hmm. um, so that you can really build, you know, build a team that realize that when you're not there or if you're growing and, and, you know, we like to have multi-unit operators that they have people that they can really embody the spirit and the culture of service that, that they need to, to execute day in and day out and, and build trust with their customers. And then the other really important um, aspect is just that that zealous passion for taking care of the customer. Um, right. mm-hmm. So it, this, is a, this is an intimate business, customer relations, right. and it takes, it takes trust. Uh, yes, with, right. with clothes comes a lot of trust. Uh, people yeah. people want to leave uh, their clothes with you. And in, in retail, everyone focuses on the average ticket, which right. in this business would be 30 or $40. But mm-hmm. what they lose in the laundry business is that's not how the customer perceives this transaction. They're not, right. they're not, not a 30 or $40 deal. They're giving you their all their clothes, which could be worth right. thousands of dollars. <laughs> right. Not to mention the mental value, not to mention, right. you know, if I need my boys' baseball uniforms clean before yes. their game, you can't screw yeah. that up. So right. there's a lot on every transaction. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, you, have to, you, you have to take that responsibility seriously and, and care yeah. for it and, and, and build that trust and relationship with the customer. Yeah, I think that's a great that's response. Why, that, that's why it's always I, – I love the idea of a franchise concept for this business. Yeah. Because right. uh, you, couldn't, you couldn't put all the resources into one sort of build the tech and to build the platform and the app right. and the logistics. Right. It'd be way too expensive. So you right. need all of that. But you also need the personal touch of the point of service with right. from the franchise customer, that TLC of taking care of the customer – um, at all points. So I, yeah. I think it's a good map that way. 
Oh yeah, I think so too. I think I think that's that's, that's well said, Peter. So how does how does the training work then, Peter? I mean, once you decide that you know you like them, they like you, and they they do want to come on board as a franchisee. So how would the training work? I mean, would they come to a corporate or um, a franchise or something? So how, how does that all work? Yeah. So uh, um, I th- we we just launched in the United States, so we have our first store uh, operating in Coral Gables, Miami, um, oh, nice. and so for for that store, we actually had people, uh, you know, from Jeff Corporate come in help work with the, the franchisee. In right. the future, we'll be building um, training points and training locations um, for for franchisees where they'll come in. There, as I mentioned, there is a Jeff Jeff Academy which they'll have to complete and go through a rigorous training program mm-hmm. prior right. to even open doors of their their business okay. or, or the store being. Built and then from there we'll uh, we'll have resources available from corporate uh, in the box. They'll be assigned a uh, partner success manager, um, mm-hmm. a, a live person that will work with them every step of the way, even before opening. You know, that one, once you sign the franchise agreement, that dedicated uh, partner success manager will be with you. You know, from site. Uh, location, um, you know, finding finding a location, uh, going through the lease, going through the build right. out. We have the build out uh, providers if if they desire um, to to manage all of the construction, and then into grand opening phase and a grand opening marketing uh, um, program, and uh, you know, as well as initial training and then ongoing training and support. So they'll spearhead all of that. That's great. Uh, how would you, if there is such a thing, I'm sure every day is a little bit, bit different, Peter, but, I mean, is, is there such thing as a typical day for uh, a Mr. Jeff franchisee? Yeah, so uh, it's uh, it, it's dealing with a lot of clothes. Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. It's, uh, it's, ba- it's bags of laundry uh, spinning in the machines and, and, yeah. and folding. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, then there's the the dry cleaning component, which we do through a wet cleaning process, which is mm-hmm. also environmentally friendly. So there's uh, right. pressing of clothes, but um, it's it it's uh, it's basically uh, you have a small bricks and mortar location, mm-hmm. um, right. a storefront with all right. your operational needs uh, in the in the back of the house. So a yeah. small uh, operating area and uh, a few machines and uh, all the equipment you need, you process everything all on, on site. So, you know, it's a combination of, I, I related to the restaurant industry, you know, the front right. of the house, uh, hospitality, interacting with customers, either in person, online, or on the phone and, and taking care of their needs. And then back of the house operations, just, you know, where the sausage is made and mm-hmm. cranking up all the clothes and, 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 Making sure the quality and, and turnaround times are, are are met to keep your customers happy. I'm thinking about your background because you've been doing this such a long time now, Peter. I mean, this must be very exciting for you, you know, because as you mentioned earlier, you know, you've been doing in this industry for decades, you know. So, yeah. um, I, I, I guess it must just be. I can see why you were drawn, you know, of course, to to, to Mr. Jess. But I guess it must be very exciting to see for you, to see where this industry is today, isn't it? Uh, it's. It's like rejuvenated me, yeah. Um, especially, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, but if if you go to like, uh, you know, you go to the trade shows or uh, mm-hmm. meet you know, industry veterans in the laundry right. industry, right. I'm like the youngest guy in the block at, 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 <laughs> at four years old. Um, yeah. But in in the tech space, like I'm the old man with gray hair, so it's like, <laughs> right. yeah, you know, it's been nice to work with young, energetic, yeah. brain. Or, you know, cranking right. and have all great ideas, and that, so right. it's re- it's really it's really given me a spark. And oh, um, yeah. and quite frankly, I I've hung around the industry so long because I've always believed that there was this massive opportunity, and you know, right. we tried so many ways to crack the nut to to, right. to go after. Um, but it it was frustrating. It, it, right. it was you know, yeah. was stubborn that play and. Um, I was really questioning how much longer you do it, and, and right. yeah, so th- this has been um, 
it's been a breath of fresh air for sure. I think it's yeah. I, I think it's wonderful, Peter. So you know, in studying your background, Peter, you know, I got the sense also, you know, that I mean, you you're, you're an entrepreneur, um, and you know, from from everything you've you've learned up to this point, um, what advice would you give to our listeners in their quest to buy a franchise? Because you know that I mean, there's a lot out there to choose from. We find that you know a lot of our listeners are a little bit confused in the early phases because they're like, oh, my God, there's all these different industries, categories. There's so much to choose from. Where do I begin? Um, from, from everything you've learned up to this point, what advice would you give to our listeners then in their quest to, to actually seek out a franchise? Yeah, I can I can relate to the struggle. It, uh, it mm-hmm. gives me anxiety when I go yeah. to a restaurant and the menu's too big. Uh, right. You know, like... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah. I, I think that... I, like, listen, I think it starts with some self-reflection before mm-hmm. before you, you go out and, and have somebody steer you and your vision and your life journey right. and your nest egg into something. You know, really understand uh, who you are, what you're good at, what you like to do, um, you know, what, what, your, what your relevant skills are, um, right. and then start to think about, you know, what – general sectors that would apply well to um Mm -hmm. and you know and then i think you have to do your your own due diligence um right you know this this, it's it's a big it's a big decision so yeah if they get out there and uh and start looking and you know i'm i'm a big believer also is uh like get immersed in 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 the process so Mm -hmm. uh right like, yeah. like, listen, that you're, if you're interested in, you know, laundry, for example, you know, like actually, you know, order the service, you know, right, go out, right, maybe, be a customer, you know, right, do some watch fold, you know, yeah. and, and understand is this is this something that I'm going to enjoy and going to like and and, right. uh, and be be passionate about um, because I like listen whether we like it or not. We spend most of our lives working and right. with the people we. Uh, so I think it should be, I, I should be, it, it, it should be something that you enjoy and you wake mm-hmm. up every day and you're excited about doing. If, if you don't have that, it's hard to right. be successful because that rubs off on your staff. If yeah. Your staff's not going to have. If you don't have it, how can right? You They'll pick up on that, it? right? Right, and, it, and then it translates. It, it translates into your customers. So, I, I yeah, think, I think. The- yeah, I, I I think that's this great advice, Peter. So, if you could look into a crystal ball, Peter, maybe whether it was a year or three years or five years down the road, I mean, where do you see Mr. Jeff USA uh, in that crystal ball? Yes, yeah, so I, I see us. Uh, you know, we're we're looking for really good. It's very important to me to to screen our uh, really good Mm -hmm. quality operators to be, you know, our first ambassadors here in the U.S. So uh, we'll we'll probably uh, sell uh, 20 to 30 locations this Mm -hmm. year, some some single units, some multi-operators, get those uh, stores up and running, support those franchisees, uh, make them incredibly successful and and then from there uh the you know the next few years will be a, a really aggressive national uh growth plan um and right. then in addition to that we have some exciting things going on overseas where we have uh other verticals so right. uh, Jeff is designed as a super app so there's not wow. only the free Jeff there's uh Jeff Fit there's Jeff Coffee now. There's uh, wow. Jeff Beauty. We have um, <laughs> two Jeff Works locations open in the U.S., which are uh, oh. low-cost uh, shared work spaces. So right. that that that'll be emerging as well. Um, you know, and 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 the point is to create an entire ecosystem on on one right. app that mm-hmm. everyone can come to their daily needs. So um, that's great. That's, that's that that's uh that's extremely exciting for us so i i i think uh i, I see the uh the next few years as a rocket ship here with that's great so that's exciting. terrific 
Well, it's like you said, it must be great for you. You know what I mean? To have this rejuvenation, as you were saying, Peter. You know what I mean? Because it is. It's, it's very exciting. I'm listening to you, and I'm excited about it. You know, I, I say, wow, this, this, this is probably going to be, yeah, the next big thing. You know, it's a big change in, in, in society. It makes so much sense, you know. So I, I, I think it's, it's, it's terrific. What's the best way for our listeners, Peter, to get more information on, on Mr. Jeff? Of course, is the, the franchise opportunity, but even the service itself. Are there any websites you can kind of direct our listeners to? Yeah, you can go to mrjeffapp.com. Okay. And uh, if anyone has any follow-up questions for me, they can reach me at uh, Peter dot Stern at Mr. Okay. Jeff app. Oh. Fantastic. Well, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed talking to you today, Peter. I, I love the business model, and I would love to invite you back over the next year or two, if it's okay with you. You know, to uh, you know, check in on the growth of Mr. Jeff because I think this is very exciting. Sure, sure, sure it'd be great. Yeah, it was my pleasure as well, Marty. Thank you, Peter. It was great to talk to you today, and we'll be right back with more franchise interviews. Coming up on segment two, you're going to hear what every franchisepreneur needs to know before buying a franchise. We're going to play a clip from our popular Great Quotes in Franchising podcast right here on Franchise Interviews. Franchisers, are you looking to reach aspiring entrepreneurs looking to buy a franchise? Are you looking to reach a highly educated audience on franchising? Franchise Interviews, an up-close, behind-the-scenes look at franchising and entrepreneurship through our website, FranchiseInterviews.com, where you can hear and read interviews as well as get tips from some of the most successful sources in franchising. Our weekly franchise radio show, where each week you get to hear a new interview with franchisers, franchisees, franchise authors, franchise experts, and attorneys, and our podcast, Great Quotes in Franchising. For more information, go to FranchiseInterviews.com or call us at 610-905-2919. That's 610-905-2919. Today's great quote in franchising is being brought to you by... Franchise Teacher. Would you like to know how to franchise your concept or grow your franchise business? Meet the experts at Franchise Teacher. The goal of Franchise Teacher is to teach, coach, consult, and advise. The team of experts at Franchise Teacher will evaluate your business model and present you with a winning business strategy. Franchise Teacher will help you decide whether or not your concept works and if it's franchisable. Franchise Teacher is proud to have over 30 years of experience in franchising as both franchisees and franchisors. Franchise Teacher are developers of over a dozen franchise systems which include brick and mortar as well as home-based concepts of nearly 3,000 combined franchise locations. Whether you need to add more units or get more customers, Franchise Teacher can help. We will teach. Franchise Teacher will help you learn our proven system. Coach. Franchise Teacher will help you provide a game plan to succeed. Consult. Franchise Teacher will make sure you stay on track. And advise. Franchise Teacher will help you learn from our over 30 years of experience in franchising as both franchisees and franchisors. Take advantage of our free, no-obligation phone consultation. Simply go to FranchiseTeacher.com or call us at 561-385-3032. That's FranchiseTeacher.com or call us at 561-385-3032. Hi, everyone. This is Marty McDermott, the president of Franchise Interviews, and welcome to another edition of Great Quotes in Franchising, where each podcast you get to hear a great quote in franchising. You know, we've been hosting franchise interviews many years now, and during that time, we've had some incredible quotes on our show. Today, you're going to get to hear from Nick Friedman, who is the founder of College Hunks Hauling and Junk and Moving Franchise Opportunity. And Nick said something really quite brilliant on our show that we haven't heard in over a decade of doing franchise interviews. We started speaking about the four F's of franchising, and interesting enough, we ended up with five F's of franchising as we were doing the interview with Nick. And, um, you know, in marketing, we talk about the four P's of marketing, which is product, price, promotion, and place. So I thought this was really brilliant what Nick said. So here we go with Nick Friedman, the founder of College Hunks Hauling and Junk Moving Franchise Opportunity. 
industry. What, um, you know, the majority of our listeners, we call them, Nick, we call them aspiring franchipreneurs. What types of characteristics do you look for in your franchisees? You know, uh, what I like to say is there's four F's when considering mm-hmm. a, a franchise, which is also, I guess, starts with a letter F. So, you know, there's mm-hmm. four F's that come out of a franchise. And I think this is what a prospective franchise should think of when they're considering what franchise they want to pursue. And this is, quite frankly, I think what franchisors should consider when they're evaluating a prospective franchisee. Uh, so right. the first F is fit, is fit. You know, do they mm-hmm. fit? In, in other words, do they have transferable skills that can make them effective at this business? Have they done anything in their prior professional uh, or personal lives uh, that would make them uh, be successful in this type of business. Uh, the second piece is the family side. In other words, does their family uh, support them in them pursuing this endeavor, right. whether it's their husband or wife or uh, uh, kids or, or parents? You know, do they believe in them? Because you don't want things to get tough in their inner circle to say, I told you so. You want them to you know, right. kind of cheer them on to get through it. Uh, the financial piece is important. In other words, are they capitalized yeah. to be able to invest in the opportunity, and do they have realistic uh, financial expectations? And then the last F is the fun factor. You know, can we have fun working with this individual? You know, franchise yeah. very much like a partnership, even though that's not typically called that. Uh, so it, you got to have you know uh, an alignment of vision and values to be able to enjoy. Uh, working together. So that's really what we look for. You know, we, we want people that believe in the secret sauce that we've already developed. Mm-hmm. We don't want somebody to come tell us it done differently. Uh, we want them to tell us that they believe in, 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 in what we've created. And, and sure, we would, you know, want to continuously improve and encourage ideas, but uh, not, you know, we want folks that believe in the system and are going to execute the system rather than trying to shortcut success by doing it, uh, you know, doing it their own way. And I think that's, you know, really no different in our system than any other franchise uh, uh, model that, that is uh, is going to be successful long term. They need to really take into account those factors. That's yeah, no, that's great, Nick. We have this uh, great quote in franchising podcast. Anytime we hear, you know, Michael Gerber's been in there a couple times, but we're going to put that one in there because I haven't heard that in in, in over a decade, and I, I think that's great advice to our listeners. It's really fantastic because it's true. I mean, you could really your business you could teach to anybody, couldn't you? I mean, pretty much, you know. It's but you know, it's interesting in putting those factors in there, you know, like family support. Or, you know, and even at fun, I haven't heard that, you know, but it should be an enjoyable business. And, you know, because it is a stressful situation for the customers, I guess you've got to be able to put a smile on your customer's face, don't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, as you know, there's over 3,000 franchise opportunities out there. So, mm-hmm. you know, what's going to separate one from the other? It's, it's got to be something that you can enjoy. And I guess I'll grab another F out of there. I'm, I'm on a roll here. Fulfillment. You know, is, is it something that, yes. uh, you know, we're going to be fulfilled doing day in and day out? Because I think franchising is a lot, a lot like a gym membership. You know, if you join a gym, you've got fitness yeah. goals. You get access to all types right. of equipment, personal trainers, coaches, workout groups, but you still got to go and show up and do the work. So if you buy a franchise, you're getting access to the business model in a box. You're getting access to trainers, coaches, you know, fellow franchisees that you can you know hold each other accountable with. But you still got to show up and put in the effort to uh, to execute that business model. So uh, that's where I think those those factors come into play. Once you decide that you know you do like them. You know, and they like you, Nick, you know, and, and there is a fit, you know, what is the training like? I mean, do they typically come to Florida for training? How does that work? If you'd like to hear that whole interview with Nick Freeman of the College Hunks Hauling and Junk Moving Franchise Opportunity, all you have to do is go to FranchiseInterviews.com, go to our Franchise Interviews by Category page, and then go to our Home Repair and Improvements page, and you'll be able to listen to that whole show with Nick Freeman. It was really a fantastic interview. It was great to finally have Nick on the show. And lastly, we'd just like to thank everyone for making this podcast such a big hit. It's hard to imagine we've been doing it now over 10 years and uh, it's just amazing to see where the podcast has gone. So thanks, everyone, for listening. And we'll see you again soon with another edition of Great Quotes and Franchising, sponsored by Franchise Interviews. Take care, everyone. interviews from eastern pennsylvania to sydney australia you're listening to franchise interviews franchise interviews